In this video, I'm going to show you how to strip a Continental 0200 A-Series engine. This particular engine is going to be installed into a Zenith CH200 that we are building for one of our customers. We will start by removing the carburetor. This is held on by four nuts that bolt the carburetor to the cast manifold that is bolted also to the crankcase. You'll need a 7 16 ring open ender and proceed and undo all four nuts and then carefully lift the carburetor up off the manifold. Next is to remove the rubber slip joints that uh, connect the cast manifolds from the bottom of the crankcase to the cylinders and they are connected via an aluminium tube. Each aluminium tube has two rubber slip joints on each, one on each end. So you'll need a flat baited screwdriver, undo all the clamps and then work the clamps back so they are actually dislocated between the two rubber joints. You may have to use a smaller screwdriver and wedge it down in between the rubber and the aluminium tube and the cast parts of the manifolds. Over a period of time the rubber bonds to these surfaces and it's quite difficult to, just to use your hands to pull it back. Inspect the tubes once you've done this because what you're looking for is any corrosion inside the tubes on the outside um, Puncture marks you have to take great care that when you are Freeing the rubber from the tubes that you don't puncture uh, these thin walled aluminium manifold tubes When we reassemble this engine we'll be using the master rebuild gasket set this set is quite comprehensive and it does include these rubber uh, slip joints. There's two parts of the slip joint, there's the outer sleeve and the inner sleeve and it comes with both. So if you are having trouble with getting these um, rubber slip joints off, just cut them off. If you are going to cut them off, just use a Stanley knife or a, or a, a box cutter type of knife. Don't refrain from using hacksaws or saws and whatnot. Because the joint is quite tight between the aluminium tube and the cast end and you don't know if um, when it was assembled whether the tube is pushed up against the cast manifold of either end or not. The best tool to remove these with if you do have to cut them off is a box cutter or a Stanley knife. You don't need to slice them around the circumference of the tube, just slice them down the length from top to bottom. And then once you've done that, then you can peel them open, like an, but like an peeling an orange, and then they will actually break the bond and come off quite easily. Inspect every tube carefully. You, as I said, you're looking for corrosion or any compromise inside the tube. They're quite thin-walled, and if there is a pinhole, it will upset the air-fuel mixture by allowing air to be sucked into the manifold tube, and then you'll have an a problem that will demonstrate itself in the fact that one cylinder would always be running lean or the EC, the exhaust gas temperature will always be quite high because it's running a lean mixture. Another issue that is sometimes common on these tubes is a chafing. This is from cable ties that have been uh, wrapped around these tubes used to hold other things up into place and out of the way and clamped up and whatnot. Over a period of time the cable ties can fret on the tube and wear their way through, especially with the more sort of rigid type of cable tie. Next we're going to remove the cast manifold that the carburetor was bolted to. This is held in place by two studs that are located into the bottom half of the crankcase halves. Undo the two nuts and slide the manifold off. Again inspect it, just look for any chafing um, pitting in the, in the aluminium uh, casting or anything like that that could actually allow air to be sucked into the intake manifold stream. Now we have removed all these items it makes it easier, easier for us to be able to remove the sump. You'll need a 7 16 ring open ender and there's six nuts that are located around the circumference of the bowl. Sometimes they are double nutted on place so if they do have double nuts you'll need to hold the bottom nut, the one that is closest to the crankcase halves, 
and then undo the top one first. Try and avoid undoing it with just using one ring open ender on the top nut because what will tend to happen is that the stud will wind its way out of the cast aluminium and if you do that sometimes you'll actually pull well most times actually you will pull the thread out of the either the accessory case or out of one of the crankcase halves or both so as I said just undo the top nut and then you've got an access to be able to undo the bottom nut and then work your way around all six Continentals O200 like this use a semi-dry sump method where the oil is scavenged from the crankcase and deposited into this sump um, bulb that's basically bolted underneath the engine. It's quite a clever idea in the fact that um, when you're operating in an aircraft environment where you can be upside down and round and on steep banks and things like that, the oil is contained in a small area like this with this shape and it has a better chance of being sucked into the pump in a constant flow. Also too the steel um, sump being externally mounted away from the engine allows airflow to pass over it and acts a bit like a cooler. There's also a secondary um, stay along with these six bolts and that's bolted to either side of on the sump. Um, so you need to remove that before you can actually uh, lift the sump off. Now the sump can actually be mounted with the filler on either or either side of the engine. Another clever feature. The gasket may be holding it on in place a little bit. So just use a rubber mallet and just give it a couple of taps. But you certainly don't need to get in there with crowbars and lever bars and whatnot to try and get it off. Once you break the gasket seal it tends to come loose and, and it's quite easy to lift up off the studs. When you are ready to remove the sump, lift it straight up. The tube that sucks the oil um, passes through the slender part of the sump here and then it um, enters into the, to the bottom where it sucks the oil. So just lift straight up. Once you have it off, just look inside, check to see if there's any um, metal components or what the sludge looks like inside there. You're going to see sludge after 1800 hours of um, operation because when you drain oil uh, for oil changes the sludge tends to stay in the sump it, it doesn't always come out even when if you run um, a hot engine when you do your oil changes next stage here is to remove the oil pickup tube uh, this is wi safety wired to the crankcase half uh, for obvious reasons you do not want this um, tube to unscrew and fall into the bottom of the sump otherwise if it does do that uh, there's going to be no oil pressure uh, due to the fact it can't suck oil up into the pump so just use your side cutters and then cut away the two uh, safety wires and then use a ring open ender and place the ring over top of this is a 7 8 uh, ring open ender over the top of the tube and then unwind it it's not normally that tight. It has a copper gasket which makes the seal. Next task is to remove the cast manifolds that bolt to the cylinders. I use a quarter drive uh, socket set um, because it, it has a small 7 16 socket that will actually pass down past the tubes to get into those nuts down the bottom. But you're also going to need a 7 16 ring open ender. Undo all the ones you can with the ratchet and then come back with the ring open ender for the more difficult ones that you can't get into. Sometimes you can use uni small universal joints on the end of your ratchet to be able to angle it to get it in so that it, uh, socket sits nicely and seats onto the nut. These are not normally overly tight. There is a torque setting on them uh, when we go to a set reassemble the engine. Undo all the nuts and then um, carefully lift off all the cast manifolds. When you go to remove the little cast manifold from the cylinder, it doesn't lift straight up. It takes a little bit of a twist to it as you, as you lift it up. Once you have it off, inspect it. Again, you're looking for any chafing, you know, any porosity in the aluminium. Uh, you're looking for anywhere the air, uh, especially look at the two mating surfaces between 
the manifold and the cylinder because um, yeah, again you don't want to let air into the intake stream otherwise it will cause a lean mixture. Once you have removed all four of these cast manifolds that completes this stage of the video. The next video we will look at removing the cylinders from the crankcase halves. Again we will try and keep it short and brief because disassembly is a relatively easy process. Basically you're just removing parts and inspecting them and ascertaining whether they are serviceable for the ne when you go to rebuild the aircraft engine. But in uh, future videos we'll also be showing you how to measure and ascertain whether the parts are usable uh, in the rebuild process that we'll be going through in future videos.